first day of the Canterbury Jockey Club's Metropolitan Meeting, thousands flocked to Rickerton to see some of the best racing turned on here for years. The tote registered a South Island record of £156,000. The New Zealand Cup of two miles attracted 19 starters, with Amolad going out the favourite, and the big crowd sees them get away to a good start. As they come down for the first time, the leader's Caprinella from Night Lancer. Now on the homeward journey, the leader's Lowry Bay from Amalad with Royal Lancer hanging on behind. At the moment, Amalad's moving nicely, and it's still Lowry Bay with Amalad and Royal Lancer. Kevin's right on the outside. It's Amalad and Kevin now. The two of them are going to fight it out. Lowry Bay is going on the inside. Amalad's out of it, and it's Kevin going into the lead. It's Kevin making a perfect run for it to sweep past the field to win from Lowry Bay, with Glenn Fallick finishing well in third place. His Excellency, the Governor-General, presents the cup to Kevin's owner, Mr. R.J. Murphy. This is his third New Zealand Cup. Oratix and Cuddle bringing it home for him twice before. Kevin was bought as a yearling for 375 guineas. And with his first New Zealand Cup in the bag, he can well look pleased with himself. The United States Minister in New Zealand, with New Zealand and American officers, gathered at Trentham Camp recently for a ceremonial parade when Brigadier R.A. Rowe, DSO, New Zealand Staff Corps, received an American decoration, the Legion of Merit, Degree of Commander. Brigadier Rowe commanded the landing forces during the occupation of the Treasury Islands. This is not only an honor for Brigadier Rowe, it's a further reminder that we're all in together. Organised by Otago and Southland manufacturers, a New Zealand Industries Fair opens in Dunedin with plenty of exhibits to demonstrate the remarkable growth of industry in the South. Thousands of people from both provinces and other parts of the Dominion throng the fair for 10 days. People of Dunedin see just what goes on in factories around their city. For here, the factories come out in the open. From stocking making, they can turn to watch how pills and medicinal tablets are made. They see a machine that works on the principle of another little pill won't do us any harm. The fair is the greatest industrial exhibition here since the Dunedin exhibition some 20 years ago. Complete broadcasting studios give people the chance of seeing just what goes on behind the mic. They can take a good look at the man who goes on and on, and the music that goes round and round. Southland, with its oats and cows, has plenty to boast about, as well as a victory loan effort. Besides, it's the only province that today can boast of a dying industry. At the Elton Lodge stud, Take a Water, the young English stallion, Barrack, a half-brother to Beaupere and Mr. Standfast, is watching one of his colts lead a parade of yearlings past the stables. Despite the war, fresh blood stock has been imported from England from time to time to enhance the reputation of New Zealand stud farms. Over at Cambridge, we find Foxbridge, four times champion sire of New Zealand, parading the Trelawney estate. As Foxbridge coats have been very prominent in past Trentham meetings, the new crop of his yearlings will be watched with interest. Foxbridge is not narrow-minded, and the estate's old mayor, Grey Eagle, proudly trots out the evidence of his attentions. Also at the Trelawney stud is Nizami, bred by the Aga Khan. This new settler passes an oak tree planted in pioneer days. Out in the paddock are Foxbridge and Nizami yearling fillies. Handsome Nizami was born well on the right side of the tracks, his sire being a St. Ledger winner and his dam the fastest mare on the English turf. His progeny are not yet old enough to have raced in New Zealand. These yearling coats of Nizami and Foxbridge are already friendly rivals. A flock of brood mares grazes, and the foals get on with the important business of growing up to be two-year-olds. Any one of these now nameless foals may one day have a famous name in the racing world. This young hopeful, only two hours old, is already standing on his own feet. Pupils of Belmont School, Auckland, learn Maori history and customs by performing the ancient dances and rituals. In making the costumes, spears and poise, instead of only reading about them, 
These Pākehā children gain a far deeper insight into the culture that made the Māori such an outstanding native race. The titi toria, or stick game, calls for concentration and has an unusual rhythm. Stripping flax, weaving mats and costumes fascinates the children and leads them to respect the clever fingers which devised the original designs. Even the hardening torture of tattoo must be endured by savage warriors, while the wahines amuse themselves with a string game. Planting time was usually introduced by a ceremony conducted by the tohanga while the men were digging with the ko. The girls enjoy doing the point dances now that their patience and perseverance have mastered the difficult art. And on the haka, the boys can rarely let themselves go. 